I'm Martha Collison, I'm a food writer and recipe creator and it is great to be cooking on the Waitrose channel. In this series I'm going to be showing you some of my favourite weeknight recipes. Today I've got a Sri Lankan curry with a lovely refreshing coconut sambal topping. I visited Sri Lanka on my honeymoon and tried Sri Lankan curries for the first time and have not been able to stop making them since. I love it because the spices are really warming, you can adjust the heat level to however you like it and it's actually quite simple to make. This series is sponsored by Muti, who have been making great quality Italian tomato products for 120 years. So to start making this curry, I'm gonna prepare the spice blend. This is the base of every good curry. So we're gonna take our spices and pop them into a frying pan. You're gonna get them nice and toasty and warm. We've got coriander seeds, and we're gonna go in with some cumin seeds as well. You don't need any oil in the pan to toast your spices. A dry pan works perfectly. The next ingredient we're gonna go for is our black pepper. Now this curry gets a lot of its heat from the black pepper, so a teaspoon might feel like a lot, but it works really nicely with the chilies. The next spice is star anise. It tastes a little bit like aniseed, but it adds a really lovely sweetness to the curry, so I'm gonna pop one of these into the pan. Then we need three cardamom pods. And then the final ingredient is half a cinnamon stick. Now I'm using a lot of whole spices to make this spice blend because they're so much fresher and you get loads of flavour. But you can use the ground ones if you want to save time. And then we're going to toast these over a medium to high heat for a couple of minutes before we add our chilli powder. You just want to gently shake the pan so you get a lovely even toast on those spices. It won't take long before your kitchen starts to fill with all these lovely smells because the spices really come alive when they're exposed to a little bit of heat. So we're just gonna cook off these larger whole spices for one to two minutes and then the chili powder's gonna go in. But if you're using all ground spices, add them all at the same time because they'll brown at the same rate. So you can notice that chili powder already starting to darken. We're not looking for it to burn just to get lovely and toasted. So we are ready to bring that off the heat. The chilli powder has darkened nicely and we'll have a lovely roasted flavour. Once your spices are ready, you want to just let them cool slightly and then I'm going to be using a spice grinder to grind mine into a fine powder, but you could also use a pestle and mortar or a high-speed blender. Add them all except these cardamom pods, so I'm going to pull those out for now. So now I'm going to take the seeds out of my cardamom pods. These should have cooled down now, so you should be able to break them open and then just put those seeds straight in. The casing's a bit papery, so we don't want to be adding that to our blend. And now I'm going to grind this up until it's a really fine powder. Fab. So all of our spices are lovely and finely ground, and this powder will keep for up to a week in a sealed container. So you could make a double batch and you could save it to use a little bit later on. So I'm making a chicken curry, so I've got my chicken chopped up into nice sized chunks in a bowl. I'm using a mix of breast and thighs because I love the flavour and texture combination you get from using both. So now I'm going to add my spices to this and start to let it marinate. So we're going to start off with some salt. You could kind of use any meat in this curry if you prefer beef or fish, that's really popular with Sri Lankan curries too. Or you could make it vegan or vegetarian by using tofu or vegetables. Now I'm going to add in my turmeric, lovely brightly coloured spice. Then we've got some tamarind paste. So this is a really tangy, fruity paste that adds a lovely sweetness. And then the final thing we're gonna add into our chicken is the spice blend that we prepared earlier. So once you've got everything in a bowl, you wanna take a spoon. I'd recommend a spoon that you're not too precious about because turmeric does stain. So mix that all together. You could use your hands, but again, the turmeric might stain your fingers. So I'd recommend using a spoon. Whilst we're in Sri Lanka, we just had the most amazing curries. I had to adapt to having spicy food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but have such good memories of just eating lovely curries, all the amazing sides. So we've got that nice and coated. So I'm just gonna set this to one side whilst we get on with the rest of the curry. So most curries start with onions and this one is no different. So I've got one red onion. I'm just gonna roughly chop this. I love that you don't need to be too precise. It's quite nice to have that texture and a little bit of chunkiness in this curry. Everyone loves a curry. Whenever you say, oh, we're making curry, I think everyone wants to come round. So this is a firm family favorite in this house. So I've got that onion. And then the other two main ingredients in this kind of fried base is our ginger and our garlic. So I'm gonna peel the ginger. A nifty tip is to use a teaspoon because it just doesn't remove too much of the ginger. You get to keep most of that lovely flesh. 
Ginger adds a lovely fragrant heat. It's got a really nice punchiness and as it cooks down, it mellows and just becomes a really lovely flavor. So once you've got most of that skin off, you can finely chop it, but I prefer to grate it. I find you get a lovely texture for your curry. So I'm just gonna use a really fine grater, get that into a nice paste. The link to the full recipe is in the video description. So we've got our ginger grated and now I'm gonna do the same thing with my garlic cloves. You can again chop these up, but I prefer just to grate them as I've got the grater handy. So you just wanna scrape the ginger and garlic off the back of your grater to make sure you get all those lovely juicy bits ready to go into our oil. So I've got myself a pan with a lid. That's really important so you can cover it whilst it's simmering later. And it's warmed up, so I'm gonna put in my oil. I'm using vegetable oil, but you could use coconut oil, any kind of oil, as long as it has a fairly high burning point. Oil is nice and hot, so we're gonna take our onions, put those in. Should hear a nice bit of sizzle. And then take your spoon, just get those moving. And we're gonna cook these until they're just beginning to turn a little golden and soften up a little bit. I'm using a red onion in this dish because I find the colours just work really nicely and just bring it to life a little bit. But you could use a white one if that's what you've got to hand. I love this recipe because I think it works really well whether you're cooking for one person or whether you're cooking for a huge crowd. You can batch cook it, keep it in the fridge, even freeze a couple of portions so that you always have it ready when you're feeling a little bit hungry and want a bit of spice. So our onions are looking good. So now we're gonna add in our ginger and garlic mix. And because it's cut so finely now, we wanna stir it so that it doesn't burn. Hear that lovely sizzle. There's nothing better than the smell of garlic cooking, which is my favorite smell in the kitchen. We're also gonna add in at this stage our curry leaves. You wanna get them in whilst the oil is hot because it helps them to release all their lovely fragrance. If you can't get hold of curry leaves, you can use a fresh bay leaf or maybe some lime leaves. They both work really well as an alternative. And just use your spoon to scrape any bits that have got stuck on the bottom, but don't worry too much about them because as soon as we add in our liquid, it will all melt back into the sauce. So now we're gonna add in our chicken and then use your spoon so you get a lovely golden coating on that. We're just looking to seal in the chicken. It locks in that moisture. My husband, Michael, or anyone who's round, to be honest, really loves this dish. Michael can definitely handle the spice a little bit hotter than I can. It's starting to smell amazing. So the chicken's been cooking for three to four minutes, so now it's time to add in our tomatoes. I love a tomato-based curry, and I'm using these peeled tomatoes. They've got an amazing, delicate flavor, a firm, fleshy texture, and natural red color, which adds loads of vibrancy to this curry. These peeled tomatoes are really versatile because you can chop them up and use them in quick cook dishes, or you can use them whole like I am in this dish, and they'll maintain their firmness even during a slower cook. Tin tomatoes are brilliant to use in dishes like this because our British tomato season is quite short, but these tomatoes have been harvested at the height of summer in Italy. So they've got all that amazing flavor. This just needs a little bit of water, so I'll measure that into my tomato can so you can swill it out and get all of those lovely tomato juices. Give it a gentle mix to make sure everything is submerged. And now we're just gonna put the lid on and leave this to cook for 15 minutes. So my curry is nearly ready. It's bubbling away behind me and I've taken the lid off so some of that water can evaporate. But whilst that's happening, I'm gonna make my coconut sambal to go with it. Now a sambal is a lovely coconut side dish that goes really well with curries. It was served a lot when we were in Sri Lanka and we went to a little cookery lesson and I was amazed at the number of chilies they were putting in. But today for my version, we've just got the one rather than the 15. We're gonna start by chopping up half a red onion and then you want this to go into either a pestle and mortar or a mini food chopper. It's one of my most used kitchen gadgets. I love a mini chopper, it's just great for everything. And then I'm gonna de-seed this chili. You can pop the seeds in if you fancy them, but I'm gonna take them out just so it's not quite so eye-wateringly hot. And if you're not keen on chili, you can actually leave the chili out of this entirely and it will just be a lovely cooling relish. So let's chop them down, place them in. Then I'm gonna blitz this to a nice rough paste. Perfect. So in this bowl, I've got some grated coconut. I've used a microplane to grate this down. So now I'm gonna add in the chili and onion. And then finally, the juice of half a lime. I like to roll a lime against the work before I squeeze it because it just means it's a little bit easier to juice. Sambal is a great side dish to dal. They have it alongside a lot of Sri Lankan breads. It's just a really nice thing. So let's mix that all together. Colors are so vibrant. Wonderful. So that is my version of a sambal, ready to serve up with our curry. So I think it's time to bring it over. Tomatoes are lovely and juicy. The chicken is tender and cooked through and the sauce has thickened up nicely. I love to serve this in a big pot so everyone can dive in and serve it alongside some rice, some flatbreads, and of course the sambal to sprinkle on the top. 